Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. Happy Catty Crypto here. Got a nice evening video for you and kind of looking at the more broader perspective of the market, looking at how the week's going across the market and really looking at what the you know, the broader media are kind of whispering about and what kind of things have been going on. So recently, Binance have proved their reserves and they've shut down what was a lot of FUD and they've actually been in a court battle from what I've been aware of um, since around 2018. And proving their reserves is, you know, it, it just proves a lot of things that have been said and these because they were supposed to be in part of some kind of money laundering thing but it's all being kind of proven and stuff like that over time so the one thing i'm seeing is that this could be the final bottom for btc and there's a few things to put into connection with stuff like this so ftx recently has gone through their huge debacle it's crashed it's capitulated it is it's dead more or less it's it's finished in a sense and it, you know whatever happens to it now is all going to be down to what happens in the coming weeks and months in courts and audits and things that are proved and it's not going to be a slow journey for anybody that's involved with the ftx kind of situation because there's so many different things that are coming from it so one thing here that you see is ignore the noise and the thing that a lot of everyday users don't understand is that Bitcoin dominance will, when there's a bull run, right, it doesn't matter really what coin it is, they will all follow it. And you can go back and you can track this uh, back to, so if you go to a daily and you take yourself back to the most recent highest high, as you can see here, really peaking out here, and then also peaking out here, you can correlate this with other coins like SHIB, you know, your typical kind of meme coin that is really affected by Bitcoin dominance. So in itself, right, the, the bull runs, they can come at any time, but certain like keys and clues. So with the FTX debacle, there's a new light being shed on this whole kind of who caused the terror debacle, who caused the crash and who was really involved in it. And I always found it really funny that Du Quan, when he said, you know, I'm not really that interested in chasing who it is. And the coinage interview person, he stated, you know, if that was me, I would want to know who did it. And there's supposed to have been messages between CZ and um, Sam Bank Fried Friedman, however you want to pronounce it and stuff like that. But the one good thing that's come from this for our community is the fact that Duquan is being put more and more and more in a positive light with the audit now with this. And it's kind of leaving a lot of people like Fat Man high and dry because now they have no ammunition and it's really hard for them to gauge engagement from a negative community that that's been hurt more than likely he's actually moved over more pointing you know fingers at the ftx situation or maybe not who knows so in itself this is good because a lot of people regardless if you hate luna classic if you hate luna or if you love luna and hate luna you know vice versa or if you just like ustc the one thing you'll always realize is, is if one of them starts to move upwards, the other two will get dragged with it. If one of them starts to move downwards, the likelihood is they're both going to get moved downwards with it. So with the Alliance module arriving, regardless of you holding a bag of Luna, it's very, very, very likely that the Alliance module is going to probably FOMO a lot of people in on the idea that it, it's just going to make it pump. And the Alliance module is something to get excited about, but you do need to understand how it works. Now, the reason why I'm saying for you, just being someone who doesn't hold Luna, is that that will affect us either way. Regardless if you like it or not, we will get dragged up with that price. And that's good for us. The fact that Duquan is being seen in more of a positive light is really good for us. And we need this right now, especially with all the infighting, um, these spaces where it's just kind of people wanting to either, you know, 
dump on someone else or it just it just sucks and you know this is this is it shouldn't be what the community is about we should be open-minded and we should understand that there's a whole world out there full of coins that we can argue with instead of infighting with ourselves because we're never going to get anywhere at some point we all need to meet in the middle ground so i see this as a positive thing not positive for sbf obviously or anybody that's involved with this but this you know it, it's positive for ustc for the sheer fact that it proves that well it could prove that it was 100% not, you know, TFL's fault. And people can move forward from that. People can start to kind of understand. And when the time comes, I'm I'm 100% certain, you know, all of these different kinds of people are going to be made whole. And what a lot of people don't understand is that Luna is just built up from the dried up community of what was Luna uh, Luna Classic before the crash they're just us they're the OGs they're the people that created so much stuff and actually left a legacy behind and another thing we're actually very fortunate about is during the crash the Oracle Rewards pool received absolutely insane amounts of inflow and we're very fortunate to have a pool that is just as big as this is because you can just see it here during the crash Straight up, we are so lucky to have an Oracle rewards pool with such a huge amount of rewards. Because imagine if we just ended up with a rewards pool like this and for whatever reason, coins didn't get sent to the Oracle rewards pool during that time. It would be a totally different story. And I think we just need to kind of appreciate the small things, appreciate what we've got. I know a lot of people want to see more burning and I'm sure people are working on ways to burn more coins. I know we are. And we're burning every month from the node. I've even spun up the Let It Burn channel and stuff like that. Again, do check that out if you haven't. And, you know, go into things with an open mind. Try not to allow noise to take over. Try not to allow negativity to take over too much. Obviously absorb the negative information that you need to absorb because it is there and it does exist and we can't hide from it. And burying your head in the sand is not always the best thing to do because when that then negative thing happens, you're kind of sat there and, Think to yourself, well, why don't I just ask or actually do some research to find out if this was going to negatively affect me or not? And, you know, it's it's really good to see everything that's going on. Um, I'm really looking forward to TFL, which is Jared handing over the whole Terra Station system. So then we don't need to spend this i think it works out as 1 billion just under 1 billion lunc out of the community pool obviously we could get lucky with binance and its next burn but at the same time they could also you know just decide well we're not going to do it no more at the same time they're so big they might not even notice and that's the god's honest truth the way they were talking about things i thought it was all a charade but it just seems that the cex is really on in the know half the time and they get stuck in their own bubbles folks have a lovely evening i'll catch you in the morning for our morning video like i said do check out the let it burn channel it is running we have got videos up and um i'll catch you in the next one beware of scammers beware of doppelgangers anybody pretending to be me and a big old schlup for you at the end Shoo!